Welcome to Copenhagen. I'm Tyler Suters. You're watching Clean Skies News. And joining me now is Rainy Cortez. She is Forest Carbon Policy Advisor with the Nature Conservancy. And Rainy, it's good to have you back with us again. Thank you. It's great to be here. Let's begin with your expectations for a RED program here in Copenhagen. Have they changed at all since the last time we talked to you back in Washington several weeks ago? No, you know, I'm still pretty optimistic that we can get a good agreement on RED. Um, the RED negotiations have been really fluid. The, the group's working very well together. They have a very competent facility and they've been moving faster than a lot of the other negotiations. Mm -hmm. So I think what we could get out of uh, on red out of Copenhagen is a pretty good, very rather detailed framework for what a red mechanism might look like based on the current tech that they have, and it would be in the form of a COP decision. You said a very competent facilitator. What does that entail, and what are you seeing so far that has your confidence so high? Well, he's got a lot of trust among the negotiators. He's been at this a long time, and so they know him, they trust him. Um, he does a really good job of dividing up the workload. So he has sort of um, different countries looking at different parts of the text. He brings together certain groups of countries that maybe need to work through some different issues. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he really works in an efficient manner to get through the text in, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing any divide that is growing or perhaps shrinking even between the developing and developed nations? That seems to be a common uh, form of uh, uh, bisection between these two groups on a number of topics. Is RED one of them? You know, I've, I've actually heard a lot of convergence on RED um, from the countries that we've been talking to so far. They've mentioned that many countries are starting to feel the need for both types of financing, public mm -hmm. and market financing, with the Nature Conservancy definitely supports. Um, countries are starting to converge around the idea of flexibility on scale, so you need a window for subnational activities um, mm -hmm. and then ultimately getting to national level activities on RED. Um, and we're seeing convergence on a broad scope so including not only deforestation and degradation, but also reforestation, restoration, um, sustainable management of forests. And so they seem to be coming together on a lot of the key issues. On the first day of COP15 here uh, on Monday, uh, Andres Kahlgren, the environment minister from Sweden, essentially pointed to deforestation issues as the key to making the other two elements work, that is climate financing or climate aid, and also international emissions targets. Do you see this as having a key place or Maybe a better question is where does it belong as a key to the other two factors? You know, I think what RED does is it brings the developing countries and the developed countries to the table together mm -hmm. to work out a common solution um, to one of the main sources of greenhouse gas emissions. And so it's really a place where they're working together um, as partners in figuring out how this might work. And so I think that facilitates the broader conversations that they need to have on the bigger issues like finance and overall targets. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular example of red working especially well somewhere in the country that, or somewhere in the world that you point to and use for an example when, you, when you're giving a pitch for the effectiveness of this program? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of activities going on around the world right now. Um, the Nature Conservancy is working in the district of Barao in East Kalimantan, Indonesia. And that district is 2.2 million hectares, so it's the size of Belize. It's quite large. It has a number of different land use types. Um, so there's oil palm concessions, there's protected areas, um, you know, there's mining, there's all sorts of different land use types. And there's a number of different stakeholders. There's indigenous peoples, there's local communities, there's migrant communities, um, you know, timber concessionaires. And so it's a really microcosm for what might go on at the national level. And so we're developing a, a red program for that district scale that, that will help the national government um, develop their national scale. And so that's a really promising model for how we might move forward and learn um, and build confidence in and doing red. Um, and there's Rain. examples like that, you know, in other parts of the world as well. With the Nature Conservancy, Randy Cortez, always good to have you with us. Great. Thank you. Looks like a good reason for high hopes here in Copenhagen. And from the floor of the Bella Center at COP15, I'm Tyler Suters. You're watching Clean Skies News.